Okay, hello everybody. I'm going to make a new soap today. So it's a brand new one and I'm calling it Holy Water. And in this one I'm using four different essential oils. Uh, my last soap that I made when I was talking about my sister, um, I did actually use fragrance. And this time I'm going to use frankincense oil, fir needle oil, ylang ylang and vetiver. And this blend is, um, where is it? Here. It's, um, Oh, it's so good. The Ylang Ylang I've used a little bit just to give some depth and Vetiver just to give some depth because the two other blends are quite flighty and can fly off. So if you only use sort of these like heart notes or top notes, then you'd have no sort of anchor. So the Vetiver and the Ylang Ylang are nice heavy base notes. So this blend is just gorgeous. It does smell kind of watery, but very rich and incense and smells like church. That's what it smells like. So I'm going to use all natural ingredients and I'm going to use some rasool, which is here. I'm going to use that in as the base. Then I'm going to do a cocoa lime and then I'm going to use some kale and clay, which I've got in this little bowl here. So I'm going to do a batch of two logs. So the blend, let me show you what book I'm using at the moment. So I got this book years ago by Anna Franklin and it's called Magical Incenses and Oils and I've recommended this to lots of people because it gives um, recipes for incense, it gives recipes for like essential oil blends, for all kinds of different things. So I've gone through and just chosen like these oils for purification, for cleansing, for... Um, what was the other one with the frankincense? Hold on yeah it raises vibrations so it can be like frankincense I do add to incense and I do regularly burn frankincense at home um, but this says it concentrates the mind lifts melancholy and drives away negativity so that's what I need right now I'm doing all right and um, after my last video I'm just so thankful for all, all of your comments and there's so many people that are going through similar things in life which we're all going to go through because grief is going to happen to every single person on the planet, it just is and it was just really really heartwarming to have so many people's stories told to me in the comments, I haven't got back to everybody but I've tried to heart every single one, obviously I'm still grieving myself so it's a bit difficult to to answer all of them like when you're you know you're in sort of despair sometimes but um overall it was just really really nice and comforting to have all of these people like all of you that left comments to tell me about what you're going through or what you've been through or when you lost your mom your dad your sister your brother your uncle your aunt there's just so many of us and to come together like this through youtube is like i just think it's a really really good thing and it just can't be a bad thing, can it? Like, to help each other out, it can't be a bad thing at all. Let me just move some stuff out of the way. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for all of your kind comments and for sharing your own grief, because I know how difficult it is. And like I said, that video, I left a pinned comment because the video was really, really hard to make and I didn't want to do it at first. I didn't, I just didn't want to make videos at all. And I was thinking, oh, I can't just like come back and do a video like nothing's happened because that's not me, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm real, I don't, I don't sort of skirt around what's happening in my life at all, it's like, but I had to be ready to make a video. So, I'm getting there and it's been almost a month now, so um, yeah, it's not been an easy ride by any means, but it gets easier and easier every day, so anyone that's still struggling, it just gets easier, like I don't think the grief's ever going to leave me at all, I, I really don't, but um, every day it's like getting easier to deal with and you just sort of, um, I'm still crying, you know, driving along in the car today and I had a cry at lunchtime, <laughs> but um, that's just going to happen, it's just like you'll hear a song or you'll try and sing and like, <laughs> like I sing in my car all the time, <laughs> which I'm finding quite difficult to do at the moment, but um, because me and my sister used to sing in the car all the time, so it's like, ah, I'm trying to get my, like, songs out, but it's really difficult. And I'm sure she's up there just laughing her head off saying, come on, come on. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm just thankful for everybody's comments and words and sharing your experiences, and let's get into making this soap. Okay. Okay, we'll just, uh... 
plug in. Plug in. Okay. So, I'm going to be uh, pouring my lye into this. But just uh, bear in mind that it could easily overflow, but I've got to be mixing it really, really carefully because it's a double batch. Normally, I wouldn't be so stupid, but <laughs> I've done it before and it was okay. Because I'm going to split this off in two, so I'm just going to have to do some gentle stick blending, which I'll probably cut out and then we'll get back to souping. So you can see the first initial bit for the weirdos out there. <laughs> I've got a new uh, counter cover today. I did this because it's a new counter underneath here, but I didn't want to have to... Like, all of my counters are different, like worktop, so I coated them in this stuff which you, you can buy in uh, DIY stores. And it's like six quid a roll, and um, you get like two odd metres... I think it's two metres a roll, so I bought four, and I've redone all of these behind me, like to the side of me. So it took me sort of... Um, couple of hours after lunch and I thought I'll just sort it out a little bit of I'll just sort it out so that it all matches still because underneath this one it's actually like an oak block but I cannot afford at the moment to replace all of them so I mean one day I probably will because I'd like it all to be like nice dark wood in here but <clears throat> it's expensive and we just got to wait, hasn't we? Okay, so I'm going to get my Russell clay here, and I get my Russell clay from Mystic Moments in the UK. They're also um, New Directions, and the Kaolin clay here I buy from Acoma Skincare. And they're a really good company that sell lots of very nice fair trade ingredients. So let me just give this a quick stick blend. I actually don't mind if there's like a few lumps, you know. I kind of like that rustic look. Which I seem to be doing a lot more of lately. I'm going to try some more natural colours. I used to use lots of natural colours years ago. I'm going to try and do my own alkanet root. So I can have a nice deep purple. Saying that, I just, I've, I've just placed another mica mama order. Because I need, I've run out of micas. But yeah, I'm going to try and do some more natural soap. So... Thumbs up if you like natural soaps. <laughs> right, I'm just going to stick blend this kale in. Now, I'm going to pour my blend. So, I'm working at 1.9% essential oils. Somebody said the other day on one of my videos, oh my god, I'd use like so much more than that. And we're not allowed in this country. Like, my assessment for my soap states... Average essential oils and fragrance oils at 1.9%. Some of them are a lot less than that. So you have to be careful. You have to look at sort of guidelines from the companies that you buy from. And also, like in the UK, we obviously have to have assessments done with our chemists. So um, they give you the, the uh, percentages that you're allowed. So we can never go to like 5%, you know. Like I have used Nature's Garden oils before. And I use them in candles and things like that. And they sort of state up to 5%, a lot of them, in bath and body products. And it's, it's kind of, in my opinion, it's too much. Oh, I think it's just starting to absolutely tip down with rain. <laughs> Everyone's rushing outside to try and get in the dry. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to stick blend a bit more because that essential oil blend has made this a little bit um, less thick. Okay. Get my moulds here. Just a little bit of spillage. Okay, so if I bring you in, you can see this closer. Okay, so let's just pour in these. So this is the Russell, 
So it's not, it doesn't go really dark, it's like a nice sort of neutral beige colour. Try and make sure that they're kind of even. I'll save a little bit for the top, I think, as well, just a smidge. It's in the, in the base there. Okay, now cocoa line. Just for a bit of contrast. Ooh, I can hear raindrops on my window. Oh, so nice. Such a comforting sound when you're inside. Okay. Okay, now. Just wipe that off a little bit. I mean, I'm going to trim the edges anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but I prefer it to not have cocoa everywhere, you know. Okay. Okay, so we might have to spoon on some of this, so let's try that first. Don't want to break that layer again, you know. Not again, I just don't want to break the layer for the bottom. So Matt's going skateboarding this evening, I think, he's going to Birmingham. So me and Doggy will be home alone. So again, we'll probably be watching Gogglebox, which I love on a Friday night. So I'll probably watch a bit of that and then have some dinner and see what else is on TV. I might get back into watching Fargo because I've got that second series to watch, like I said before. And I'll tell you what I did stop, I will actually finish watching it, was the bat, was it Battle of Buster Scruggs? <laughs> so my nephew came round and he, he said, have you seen it? I was like, no, no, no. He said, we put it on, oh my God. Good, good, good film. Odd, but good. I like it, liked it. That Southern drawl, who's that actor? I can't think off the top of my head now. Very, very funny. The one who played Buster Scruggs, he just had me in bits. Class acting. <laughs> I love films like that. Like a Western, you know, like a really good, but kind of nasty <laughs> and humorous Western. It was re I really loved it. It was good. Has anybody seen it? I bet you have. <laughs> Battle of Buster Scruggs. So my sister was a massive film buff, like she would spend days watching movies, like just constantly watching movies. And we used to watch lots and lots and lots of films together. And our favourite films are Jaws, of course, and Fire Green Tomatoes, which I don't think I'm ever going to be able to watch again right now. <laughs> um, how to Make an American Quilt, that was another one we used to watch all the time, and Goonies, Lord of the Rings, she was a real, um, like really into the mystical side of life, you know, like really into it, very in tune with the planet and the universe and her spiritual nature was uh, definitely at the forefront of her throughout her life. She's just one of those people that felt everything very, very deeply and which is why it got her into trouble in the end, you know. But people ask her, you know, try and explain what she was like and it's quite difficult because she was quite complex at the same time as she was so human. 
like she would uh, be able to lift you right up in your darkest moments but she could also tear you right down <laughs> as well so uh, yeah there's a you know two, like there are two sides to everybody there was definitely two sides to Tracy but hilariously funny and um, yeah just so completely human and non-judgmental she'd never judge anybody she'd talk about people and have a laugh about people but she never would judge and I really really admire that in people when they don't judge others you know it's like a real endearing quality because these days everybody's out to judge everybody aren't they nobody's accepting of anybody if you know their beliefs or whatever don't fit in with them and all that kind of stuff it just uh, is bothersome to me and um yeah she was the same didn't like injustices and I'm very much like that myself. I don't like people being hurt for just being themselves, you know, and people not agreeing with them or not being on the same wavelength as them, so they sort of persecute people. Like, you get it every, every day, you know, that's what, it's just what life is like, but it's lessons that we need to learn as people to stop judging everybody and just uh, people act the way they act because of what they're going through or, you know, it just, it's, everybody's experience is different on the planet and nobody's experience is better than anybody else's it's just we're all human beings and yeah people do like to judge when it's not their place to you know anyway, stop rambling but yeah it bothers me when people are like that because you you sort of think give people a chance you know people are always there's always somebody suffering and Always somebody going through stuff you don't know. You don't know because some people find it hard to open up and some people find it hard to share what they're really feeling. So they act in ways that don't actually portray what they really feel. And then they get judged by others and it's just crap. It's just the way of the world. It's just we need to be more conscious of these things, I think. It's definitely just going through this grief has definitely taught me lots about how I should be treating people and, you know even down to like how I talk on this channel like it it's all relative you know it just is just share your existence with people share your experiences share the way you think and feel like it's fine to do that but don't judge others if they don't feel the same as you do about things because everybody's on their own path and everybody will figure it out for themselves or not, you know. <laughs> so, there we go. I'm just going to spoon over. Just give me a Just got some clay stuck on there. So, now I'm just going to do my tops. Don't do too much to it it's not really going to make much difference because the two colors are actually really similar you can just about see the rustle it really does smell good mm -mm -mm. okay that's that so I'm going to actually 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 I might just take a bit more rustle, which I've got in my tub, and just sprinkle on a little bit down the side there, as we can, just for a bit of contrast because it looks similar to a soap I've just posted on Instagram. Links are below for my social media if you want to come and follow me there. But I did make a sweet chestnut latte soap. Um, and I cut it, I think it was the day before yesterday. And it actually looks similar to this because it's very neutral. Because I think it's going to go really dark brown. I'll show you actually. Okay, so there's a sprinkle of rustle. I'll probably just sink in and just add a bit of contrast. Okay, 
So there we go, that is holy water. And this one will be available in a few weeks. Um, my soaps take about three weeks to cure with this water discount, so I'm still doing a 50%. Like I just top my water in half. I still get asked questions about that. It's um, whatever soap kelp tells you, I just chop that amount of water in half. That's all I do. So I don't go by ratios and things like that and go complicating people's brains. It's just literally the water is chopped in half. Okay, so this is the other one I made, I was just saying. And it is, yeah, sweet chestnut latte. It actually smells, if you're familiar with um, buttered maple oats and honey from Nature's Garden, it smells really similar to that. But um, yeah, if you sort of look, it's kind of, you know, along the neutral lines, but I'm guessing that this one's gonna go slightly darker yet, so that's that. So that's why I just wanted to change that one a little bit. And then another one I made was gin and tonic. And this one smells a little bit like a Christmassy scent in, in a way. Oh, I said that in the video when I did the haul video for Candle Shack. This smells like snowman balls a little bit, but I added some lime essential oil to this one. It is pretty nice. So they're a curing at the moment. There'll be some new soaps available soon. So I will be back tomorrow and we'll cut this soap. And thanks for watching. See ya. Hi, everyone. Okay, I'm back Saturday afternoon I'm just gonna come just came up to cut this and see what we got I just posted a picture actually on Instagram so it should be quite hard by now it's been just a little under 24 hours but because of the water discount it will have gone pretty hard pretty quickly so there we go that's the soap Oh, it smells, do you know, this is a little bit like Tombstone. Where are you? Hey. <laughs> it's a little bit like Tombstone soap that I make in the autumn, like for Halloween. It smells a little bit similar. But this one, I think, is a little bit nicer. So I'm going to put a few bars on camera and we'll see what we've got. It even looks similar. I think I did the same sort of thing with Tombstone before. Or was another one. There's some, some soap I've made that looks pretty much the same as this one. I can't remember which one it was. I think it might have been Tombstone. But that's it. It's got the cocoa in the middle, look. And then that rattle and the kale in on the top. Oh God, it smells really, really, really good. You can get that ylang ylang coming through. That's a, that's a nice addition, because it gives like a slight um, headier, it doesn't really smell m massively floral, the ylang ylang in this, but it's got, it just adds something to it. It's really nice. I can really smell the frankincense in there too, which is great because I love frankincense. Okay, so today, what have we done? We've had a walk this morning. Now, there used to be a, there's a track where we walk down. There's a place called The Common, and um, we've been walking there for years and years and years. Like, when my grandparents were alive, they used to walk us down there with the dog. When, like, my grandparents had a whippet years ago as well called Jet. So we used to go and walk him down there, and it was just this beautiful meadow. It was full of flowers, and... Then for a time there were, it was the farmer with his cows and there was a traveller site there where my sister lived and yeah, lots and lots of things. There's a huge area for fishing. It's just a really, really pretty area. So we went down there this morning because down the track is a sister's bush or there was a sister's bush, which lab, like what labdanum oil comes from. It's like a rock rose. So I went down because last year I went and picked the flowers and used them in some product. But uh, I thought, oh, I'd better go back down and see. Because I wouldn't mind getting some more because I think I used them all last year. And somebody's chopped it all out. Like there was a beautiful yellow rose as well down there. And it's somebody's obviously gone along, chopped all the hedgerows out. And along with it, my labdanum bush. I was like, oh, whoever's done that. 
thanks a lot. <laughs> so I wasn't too happy. I don't think I've got any. Let me have a look. I don't think I have got. Oh, there is a few. Yeah, there's a few from last year in my little, uh, I'll show you, they're, they're quite big, um, quite big flowers. These do smell good. Yeah, these are last year, so I did like, uh, you can see that very well. There's a load of, um, oh my God, they smell so good. So I have a few, that's good, I've got a few left, but yeah I was gutted. There is another another one of the plants that is in our local park but it might be a bit more tricky to go and get them like on the common land you know you can go and pick what you want and go and take what you want really. Nobody's going to come along and bother you because it's common land. But yeah somebody's gone along and chopped the, all of the bushes out. There was like a, another bush on the left hand side where loads of um, hops used to grow as well so you could go and pick the hops but that's all gone as well so it's just I'm gonna have to find a new little uh, place to go and pick some bits and pieces because I like getting wild flowers and you know things I'm finding on my walks every day it's really nice to go back and get them every year but yeah somebody's taken that I was gutted so I don't know who's been down there but um yeah that was a bit of a pain I'm sure I'll find another one. I could always even go and buy one and grow one in my garden, but they get quite big, you see. My garden's quite small. I suppose I could train it to... I'm just going to chop this over a log. I suppose I could train it to uh, grow smaller, you know. Anyway, a bit gutted about that, but never mind. So what else are we doing today? Oh, yes, we are... Um, We've got a work unit, like so in our kitchen, we did our kitchen done a couple of years ago with a, a friend of ours did our kitchen for us. And we bought some new base units and it's taken us absolutely ages to sort it out to get the worktop on. So we've been actually using the base units and reaching for the plates from the top because we're so useless at doing these things and always want somebody else to do it for us. It's like we're both busy, you know, we've got like our jobs to do. So in the evenings, we get really lazy and it's time that we changed. <laughs> Stop being so lazy. I said, God, we're useless, you know, like we got this worktop the other day, we went and bought it. And uh, like I said, I've got the rest of it here, which I've covered with my uh, worktop cover. Cause I like, you know, I didn't want to have to go and replace all of them in here. So I just covered it with what I'd already got anyway. We just needed to put it on. We just needed to put it on and that's it. So we've done it this morning. I've just left Matt sorting out, sort of getting the doors straight because the doors had bowed a bit because we'd been putting stuff on the top. I mean, what a pair of idiots, honestly. We want to do these home improvements so that eventually we can move, but we're so slow at getting anything done that we're just, you know, pressing pause all the time on our move, it's, it's ridiculous. So. I thought, right, no more messing about, we've got to get this sorted. So I've come up here, because we've got to do the edging strip along the worktop. Where it's been cut, you've got to, you know, replace the edge. So we bought some edging strip, and I've just come up to get my glue gun, so we can stick that on. And then we'll be done. It'll be finished. But it's literally taken us months. Is anybody else like this? Like, you know, unless somebody's in there doing it for us, we get pretty damn useless. I never used to be. You know, I grew up in a house where my father wasn't around because my parents divorced when we were kids. So my mom did everything and we learned from her how to, we built doors and laid floors and you know, you just get on and do it. So I'm used to doing these things. But um, yeah, over the last few years, we've been really lazy in our house. And our main aim at the moment is we wanna move. We wanna move from the area that we're in to a nicer property with a better garden because we wanna grow some vegetables and just have a nicer place to be, you know? But we're not ever going to do it unless we get off our asses and move. Like move ourselves through doing this stuff so that we can get things finished. So then we can put the house on the market so then we can make the move. It's like we just keep putting like a stopper on everything. It's ridiculous. Anyway, <laughs> I think I'm going to go back this afternoon and we'll get the stripping, the stri edging strip done. And then there's bits and pieces to finish in my bedroom. I want to repaint the bathroom. I just need to get on, you know. Stop messing about because there's no time to mess. <laughs> yeah.
anyway here is holy water soap and I will be back for I think I'm gonna make um, just pick some up so you can see look at that I think I'm gonna make um, lagoon next because that's a really popular one and it's one of my absolute favorites like my personal favorites lagoon is a blend of geranium patchouli and lavender oil so I think I'll make that one next so I'll do that on camera if I haven't done it recently I don't think I have I'll check but yeah, I'm having no right day today. I had a bit of a bad day yesterday, like yesterday afternoon, I was getting upset again and I went to see my mom last night and I stayed with her till eight o'clock so I could just, uh, I walked the dogs and had a nice walk in the countryside, which always helps when you feel low. So I did that and I just, I did come away feeling a lot better, but I just having one of those days where I just couldn't stop crying. And today I feel better and I slept really well and I slept right through till 10 o'clock this morning so I must have been tired because I never do that. I did wake up like early morning but um, yeah I know that this process is going to take forever <laughs> but yeah that was a bad day but we're having a better day today so that's good and I will see you for my next video and leave me some comments let me know how you're doing and I'll see you very soon okay see ya.